Right now, Joe Biden is officially the nominee. We are breaking down day two of the DNC and looking ahead to what's happening today. Plus, the Postmaster General walking back his plans for changes to the Postal Service. Why some are saying that still isn't enough. And the ground is getting pretty crispy across southern Wisconsin. I'll tell you when you can expect to see your next chance for rain in just a few minutes. This is News 3 Now This Morning. A good Wednesday morning, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. It's August 19th. I'm Chris Stanford. Thanks for joining us. I'm Leah Lynch. I, Joe Biden is officially the Democrats' pick for the presidency. Wisconsin cast 30 votes for Bernie Sanders and 67 for the next president of the United States of America, Joseph Biden. Biden's nomination comes more than 30 years after he made his first bid for the presidency back in 1988. Party leaders pledged their state's delegates to the former VP during a nationwide roll call last night. Biden still has not accepted the nomination, though. That will happen tomorrow. Day two of the Democratic National Convention was themed Leadership Matters. The night brought speeches from the wife of now official Democratic nominee, Jill Biden, Jill Biden uh, former President Jimmy Carter, and Bill Clinton. A couple of surprise guests, too, including late Senator John McCain's wife, Cindy, and Colin Powell. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez also made an appearance, delivering a nomination speech for Bernie Sanders. I hereby second the nomination of Senator Bernard Sanders of Vermont for President of the United States of America. Now, there has been some confusion online over that announcement, but it was strictly a procedural move, as she tweeted afterwards. Sanders passed the number of delegates required by party rules to be nominated, even though Biden was eventually chosen as the party's nominee. The congresswoman says that she does support Joe Biden and will vote for him in November. Going into day three of the convention, tonight's theme will be a more perfect union. Featured speakers include Governor Evers, Barack Obama, and a speech from Senator Kamala Harris. The latter will also be accepting the party's nomination as the vice presidential candidate. Uh, President Trump's son, Eric Trump, made a stop in Milwaukee yesterday as a part of the Trump campaign's expanded presence in the Badger State during the DNC. He visited the Milwaukee Police Association following its endorsement for the president's re-election. His trip comes a day after the president visited Oshkosh and a day before Vice President Mike Pence is set to visit Janesville, which is uh, this morning. The vice president will be landing in Janesville at 11 before heading to Darien for a speaking event at noon. Our very own Adam Duxter headed to Janesville right now. He'll be providing live updates for us all morning. You can watch his reports and the vice president's arrival. That'll be live on channel3000.com and our Facebook page. Election officials in Rock County say they're expecting a big increase in absentee ballots this year. They're expecting tens of thousands of ballots in November. Now, those are numbers they've never seen before. Rock County election officials say they're anticipating a need for more poll workers than they've ever had in the previous two elections. On August 11th, city clerk treasurer tells the Janesville Gazette they had about 134 poll workers. They hope to have that up to 200 by November. About 22,000 primary votes came in for the August primary. Presidential election typically brings in a lot more votes. Two and a half months before the presidential election, Wisconsin is one of the latest states to join a lawsuit pushing back against postal service changes. The USPS reversed course though yesterday, the postmaster general now saying any changes will be suspended until after the election. That decision means mail processing equipment and collection boxes will stay in place. No mail processing facilities will be closed either. But state attorney general Josh Call says the lawsuit will continue in order to prevent disruptions in the future. A lot of voters are going to be using mail-in ballots this year. Making sure that the Postal Service continues to operate effectively is going to help make sure that our election takes place effectively. The House of Representatives will be voting on a bill this Saturday that would allocate another $25 billion to the USPS. Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett says the city is installing more drop boxes to make it easier for voters to drop off absentee ballots this November. Barrett made the comments as part of the Democratic National Convention, accusing Republicans of attacking voting by mail. Other cities are taking similar steps in anticipation of a massive surge in absentee voting this fall. More than half a dozen cities and counties and civil rights groups are suing over the president's decision to cut the 2020 census short. The lawsuit filed against the Census Bureau and the Department of Commerce is asking that the November deadline be reinstated replacing the new September deadline. They say there is no justification in cutting the census short and that it will lead to undercounting in minority counties and inaccurate counts of residents. The census helps determine future federal spending and the number of congressional seats and electoral college votes. 
The census was initially extended from July to October because of the pandemic, but was then scaled back by a month. Well, the U.S. military is investigating a report of a possible drone flying too close to Air Force One. People reportedly saw an object flying as the president's plane was landing at Joint Base Andrews on Sunday. A witness says it was in the air a short distance below and off to the side of the plane. The White House has declined to comment. A U.S. official says a sensor system would have detected an unauthorized airborne object. After reviewing initial feeds, the computers didn't show anything, but they're still investigating. 605 right now, Hattie joins us with a look at your first worn weather and a look at Doppler track where there is not a drop of rain and boy, Hattie, we really could use it. We really could use the rain around here. It's getting pretty dry, but take a look at the radar map. It's very quiet around here, especially southern Wisconsin. There is some uh, rain activity well off to our north, southern parts of Canada, getting a little bit into the UP and also some widely scattered to isolated shower activity through the central plains. But overall, around here, things are quiet. High High pressure is going to keep things pretty quiet for the next couple of days. If you remember this graph from yesterday, I showed again because there have been a few changes, maybe not in the way that you would like to see though. Saturday's rain chance yesterday was about 30%. Today with the new updated forecast models, it's down to about 20%. So there is a chance, but it's not a very good one coming up this weekend. Here's a look at your future track forecast model starting uh, late Friday, early Saturday, keeping us dry. So if you have plans Saturday morning and you're looking for dry conditions, should be just fine. Now, a front is expected to move through the area, but not until later on Saturday. And the timing being a little later in the day means that those storms would likely be a little weaker and the rain would be lighter. That to move through the area by early Sunday morning. Here's a look at precipitation potential, generally looking at very light amounts for southern Wisconsin this upcoming weekend. Here's a look closer to home at what we have this morning. Temperatures are starting off a bit of a cooler note. A lot of green on this map with temperatures down in the 50s, 53 in Madison, 50 in the Dells, 55 in Mineral Point. Monroe has been the warm spot all morning with 58 degrees. Now here's a look at your future track forecast model. Staying quiet through the day today with high pressure almost directly overhead. Winds are expected to be very light. You may see a few clouds pop up here and there this afternoon, but temperatures will quickly warm back into the 70s. We'll top right around 80 later on this afternoon. Staying pretty quiet this evening and again dropping into the 50s overnight, but not quite as cool by 7 tomorrow morning. Temperatures will already be back in the 60s. Here's a look at your extended forecast. We have temperatures slowly warming a little bit each day, 81 tomorrow and 83 on Friday. Then as we head through the upcoming weekend, there's that slight chance for rain overall next week, though, looking pretty quiet as well. All right. Thank you very much, Hattie. 607 now. State and county health officials say 14 more people have died in Wisconsin putting the state's total number of COVID-19 deaths at 1,060. Around 650 new cases were reported in the past 24 hours. The percent positive has dropped for a second day in a row. 6.3% of tests came back positive yesterday. When we do have a working vaccine for coronavirus, it likely won't be mandatory. That is according to our country's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, as reported by The Hill. Fauci says businesses and schools may be required uh, requiring the vaccine, but he'd be surprised if the federal government required it. There are a few possible vaccines with promising results in phase three trials right now, but no word on when they'll be ready for the public. The Trump administration has said they hope to start making the first doses available by the end of the year. Relaxed COVID-19 restrictions are not much better for the economy. That's according to a new study Bloomberg is reporting on this morning. Researchers at the University of Copenhagen compared Sweden, which never went into full lockdown, and Denmark, which did. They found that consumer spending in Sweden only declined four points less than Denmark. They say that's likely because Swedes imposed restrictions on themselves, even if the government did not. Authors of the study say they hope this research can help other governments make informed decisions on what restrictions they need to make and how it could impact their economies. Developing right now, we're keeping a close eye on the stock market this morning after a record-breaking close for the S&P 500 yesterday. The S&P had been nearing a record for the past few days, but kept falling short. It closed last night up 0.2%, bringing an end to the 2020 bear market and making it the shortest in history at just over one month. New details from President Trump this morning saying that he is putting trade talks with China on hold. At an event in Arizona yesterday, the president said that he doesn't want to talk with China right now. When asked if he'd pull out of a trade deal with the country, the president told reporters that it was not out of the question. 
This after planned talks between the U.S. and China were canceled ahead of their Saturday meeting. Reuters reports that meeting was to discuss implementing the so-called phase one of the deal. The WHO says we could see a worldwide baby boom thanks to the pandemic. The organization says about two-thirds of surveyed countries say they've had disruptions in family planning and contraceptive services in the last few months. Marie Stropes International says across 37 countries, they're seeing nearly 2 million women receiving services compared to last year. They're expecting nearly a million unintended pregnancies worldwide as a result. Interesting. One of the major adjustments to back to school this year will be feeding students. Schools are ditching crowded cafeterias and lunch lines. So coming up in our next half hour, I'm going to take you through some of the precautions that school districts are taking to provide meals for your students. 610 on a Wednesday morning. Let's take a look at your first warn traffic and that starts with the car wash forecast on this hump day looking good over the next few days with that rain chance only on Saturday looking slim at this point. We put the green light through Friday. There's a look at your Madison Metro maps right now. No crashes or major delays to speak of. A few slowdowns on East Washington Avenue Beltline looking so far so good if you're hopping on from the interstate heading westbound in the eastbound lanes as well. Moving at posted speeds. That's your first one traffic. 610 now coming up. New video going around online this morning showing Anissa Scott calling for an end to gun violence four years before she was killed in a shooting. We'll show it to you after the break. Bucks in action in the first round of the NBA playoffs yesterday. We'll let you know if uh, they could pull off a little magic against Orlando. That's coming up. Keep it here. Golf Range and Suites of Vitens Golfland provide safe fun. Golf Range buckets and balls are sanitized after each use, and high touch areas are regularly sanitized. Old grill and bar service is provided safely to your golf suite by waitstaff. Try fun, easy to play top tracer games like Go Fish only at Vitens Golfland. Non attorney spokesperson. This is a paid advertisement for legal services sponsored by Nightline Legal. Cases assigned on a random basis to participating law firms. This drug remains approved by the FDA. If you or a loved one regularly took Zantac and were later diagnosed with cancer, call right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. Potential cancers include bladder cancer, colon cancer, kidney cancer, stomach cancer, liver cancer, pancreatic cancer. Do not stop taking a prescribed medication without first consulting with your doctor. Discontinuing a prescribed medication without your doctor's advice can result in injury or death. Call 1-800-670-2995. Great decision on your new windows. Buy one, get one won't last long. Have you always been so passionate about windows? Falco's buy one, get one free windows is totally rad. Falco's energy efficient windows are a must in every home. So hurry, call now. You could say that. Buy one window, get one free, and get no interest for one year. Buy one, get one free, and soon. Call now. For quality windows, siding and doors, call 866 for Feltco. Your parents spent years taking care of you, but as the years go by, it becomes your turn to take care of them. This might mean trusting a nursing home, which promises to care for them as cherished loved ones. But if the nursing home you've chosen is not keeping their promise, we can help. If your parents have been injured in a nursing home, call Habish, Habish & Rotier. We fight for what's right. Go with Cars Grand Opening Sale, beautiful Middleton, 2017 Nissan Sentras, Hyundai Elantras for only $79.95 or $129 per month. That's right, buy 2017 Nissan Sentras and Hyundai Elantras for only $79.95 or $129 per month. Govan Cars is selling 2018 Kia Fortes for only $89.95 or $149 per month. Hurry in today and just ask for my dad, Don the Dealman Govan. Or my daughter, Crystal the Pistol Govan. You gotta go to Govan. GovanCars.com. A1 Furniture and Mattress on Stoughton Road is now open. Family owned for three generations, the Canarella family offers the best prices, service, and selection in town. That's why we're A1. Locally owned and operated since 1980. Whatever your water worry, Culligan Water can help. With over 40 filtration systems, including the world's best softener, no one filters more than Culligan Water, the only water that comes with a van. Contact Culligan, the local water experts. Buy Tens Golf Land offers three award-winning 18-hole miniature golf courses, two outside and one inside, all open day and night. Have peace of mind. Miniature golf clubs and balls are sanitized after each use, and high-touch areas are regularly sanitized. Enjoy safe fun for everyone at Buy Tens Golf Land. 
Developing right now at 614 this morning, police in Middleton are investigating after a report of shots fired overnight. This is a live look at the intersection of Century Avenue and Highland Way near the entrance to the Pheasant Branch Conservancy. Multiple bullet casings were found, but police tell us nobody was hurt and no one's been arrested. We'll keep following the story as it develops this morning, both here in the Alert Center and online, channel3000.com. Continuing coverage now, a video from four years ago is going around online this morning featuring Anissa Scott, who was shot and killed last week. I just want to go outside and play, like a seven-year-old is supposed to do. I don't want to die. A heartbreaking request from Anissa, just seven years old at the time, praying for a little boy shot and killed in Chicago. Anissa's stepfather, Raphael Ragland, remembers filming the video, haunted by what he told Anissa, that she is safe where she lives. Anissa met the same fate in Madison last week, shot while riding in a car. She was 11 years old. Anissa thought her words in Ragland's film could change the world and stop gun violence. One video where Anissa played a role where she got shot and she went into a coma. And when she came out the coma, she was talking about she met God. Raglan says he finds comfort in the thought that the happiness she felt playing an angel has reached her again. On Saturday, there will be a unity march at the Capitol in Anissa's honor. Her family will celebrate her life at Bree Stevens Field, followed by a public viewing. We'll have full coverage of that memorial right here on News 3 Now, Saturday night. The two teenagers who were arrested in connection with Anissa's death are now officially charged. Perry and Carrion and Andre Brown, both of Madison, appeared virtually yesterday in Dane County in court. They're charged with first degree intentional homicide. Bail for Carrion is set at more than $2 million. That is for the homicide charge and others. According to the criminal complaint, Andre Brown is the alleged shooter. His bail is set at $1.5 million. 16 year old Brown will be tried in adult court due to the severity of the crime. A billboard put up in honor of Breonna Taylor, meantime, in her hometown of Louisville, Kentucky, has been vandalized. Look at this. This is one of 26 billboards put up in and around the city by Oprah Winfrey's magazine earlier this month. It appears as though someone tossed red paint onto Taylor's forehead. The billboards feature a call to action that says, demand that the police involved in the killing of Breonna Taylor be arrested and charged. Visit UntilFreedom.com. LeBron James and several other Lakers players also taking part in calling for action in Taylor's death. Before and after last night's game, members of the team wore hats that played on President Trump's Make America Great Again slogan. The words Great Again were marked through and instead read Make America Arrest the Cops Who Killed Breonna Taylor. Taylor was killed during a flawed forced entry raid into her home back in March. None of the officers involved have been charged, but the Kentucky Attorney General is still investigating that incident. 617 right now, we're keeping a close eye on the west coast of Mexico this morning where Hurricane Genevieve is currently a Category 3 storm down from a Cat 4 overnight. Genevieve rapidly developed from a tropical storm that first formed late Sunday. It's now tied with Hurricane Douglas for the strongest storm of the year. Hattie's been tracking this for us this morning, and Hattie, it looks like it is weakening down from a Cat 4 already. Yeah, and it's expected to weaken rapidly over the next day, maybe not within the next 12 hours, but then after that, it will move into some colder uh, Pacific Ocean waters. Let's take a look at that hurricane uh, on the map. We have my winds right now, 115 miles an hour. Again, it is a Category 3 storm, expected to undergo some maybe eye wall strengthening throughout the day today, or some eye wall replacement, but note the placement of this storm. The latest forecasts are taking it a little bit further to the east, so that means a little bit farther away from Baja, California. Again, by Friday morning, winds down to 85 miles an hour, so a category one storm, and then rapidly weakening after that, again, as it enters those colder Pacific waters. So again, the effects to the uh, shoreline, there will be some, but it's good news that the uh, storm is tracking a little bit further to the east. Here's a look at what we have closer to home this morning. Thank Things are pretty quiet. The sun is up this morning. Skies are clear. Here's a live view from the WIC TV sky camera shot. Beautiful morning. Very comfortable temperature wise. 53 here in Madison, 50 in the Dells. Mineral Point is at 55. Monroe is up a degree to 59. It's been the warm spot all morning long. Here's a look at our pet walk forecast. This is Clay in Belleville. I don't know if Clay's yawning or yelling.
But either way, we have a pretty nice forecast. Sunshine, maybe clay will be curled up in a nice spot this afternoon. 80 degrees with sunny skies. Coming up in just a few minutes, we'll take a closer look at that weekend forecast for southern Wisconsin. All right, Hattie, thank you. We want to get to some breaking news right now. You are taking a live look in Grand Prairie, Texas, just outside of Dallas this morning, where emergency crews are working to put out a massive industrial fire. Take a look at your screen. Look at those flames. It first started around 1 o'clock this morning, and it is still burning at this hour. Right now the fire and smoke can be seen from miles away and local news crews say that explosions can be heard coming from that facility. There's still no information about what started this fire at this hour but we are working to learn more details. All right thanks Josh. Well the Milwaukee Bucks are off to a rough start to the NF, uh, NBA playoffs. Uh, they lost to the Orlando Magic last night. Uh, the first seeded Bucks got off to a slow start and just couldn't come back. Uh, they eventually lost to the eighth seeded Magic, 122 to 110. Giannis scored 31 points, 17 boards. Wasn't enough to the rest of the team to struggle to score. Game two of the seven game series is tomorrow night. All right, 20 minutes past six o'clock on a Wednesday, guys. You now have the excuse to eat Girl Scout cookies for breakfast. We're going to tell you about the newest flavor straight ahead. And coming up in our next half hour, we'll continue our back to school coverage by taking a look at lunch. We'll show you what that looks like for these kids who are already back in school. Stay with us. Dear Summer, how do I make the most of you? Do I kick back and relax? Or climb new mountains? I could go and get dirty. Or switch into new lanes. One thing's for sure, it's gonna be great. Can't wait, Toyota. Right now, you can get 1.9% financing for 60 months on a new 2020 RAV4 or RAV4 Hybrid. Toyota. opened its doors to the world. A lot has changed in 25 years, but one thing that stayed the same? Denver Mattress is still the easiest way to get the right mattress. And during the 25th anniversary sale, take 25% off the entire Doctor's Choice lineup. Check out the Summit Firm for only $189.99. And score free shipping when you buy any mattress. And to celebrate our newest arrival, test out the outrageously comfortable Casper mattress. And five years no interest. Happy birthday, Denver Mattress! You've heard that an apple a day keeps the doctor away, but you still need to see your dentist because getting good dental care is important to your overall health. You know dental bills can take a big bite out of your budget, especially if you're retired or on Medicare. Even a simple cleaning can cost $200, and other procedures like crowns and root canals can cost hundreds, even thousands more. But affordable dental insurance from Physicians Mutual Insurance Company can help. Give us a call or go online for this free information kit with all the details. This isn't just a discount plan or for checkups only. This is real dental insurance that can help pay for over 350 covered procedures, like cleanings, fillings, crowns, even dental Ventures. There are no deductibles, no annual maximum, and you can see any dentist you like. So don't wait. Call or go to sendinfokit.com to get your free information kit. Call now. Uneven surfaces are a major hazard to your family, friends, and employees. Don't risk another fall. Let concrete lifting technologies raise up your pavement. Our minimally intrusive process uses polyurethane to level sunken concrete and provide an even surface. Plus, this process is a fraction of the cost to replacing your driveway. Concrete Lifting Technologies, Southern Wisconsin's premier concrete leveling specialists. For a free estimate, contact us today. Love getting prices that are lower than low on food that's fresher than fresh? With the Pick and Save app, you can get personalized coupons on top of weekly sales and rewards like fuel points, all for prices that are lower than the everyday low. So go ahead, get lower than low. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. All right, we're back. Uh, who's hungry? <laughs> Look at this. So we're giving away a grill, and we're asking you to send in your pictures. This is a Green Mountain Grill from Recreational Concepts in Oregon. Uh, so 
Here's uh, the latest entry on uh, some kebabs. Ooh. Mm. Yes. Teriyaki steak kebabs with onions, peppers, and pineapple. Yes, please. Get in my belly. 624, mm. we're ready to grill. We want to see what you are grilling this summer. Go to channel3000.com slash what's grilling. Submit a photo from your backyard barbecue. You have until the end of the week to get those pictures in. Then you'll be entered for a chance to win that grill. Again, from Recreational Concepts in Oregon. Then we'll share some of our favorites every morning. Well, here, it's what, a very nice grill, too. Yeah, what's your go-to grill items? Mine's probably always a steak is what my go-to is. Steak, baby. Yeah, baby. For sure. I like, uh, like corn on the cob on the corn grill. Corn on the cob's Ooh, good, too. It's really good. Uh, I like some, like a tinfoil packet of, like, veggies and... The health nut over here. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, some diced... Like burger. Uh, burger. Is that your go-to? Quartered red yeah. potatoes. T-bone! Just give me a burger. <laughs> <laughs> burger and hot dogs for the win. Well, guys, have you ever eaten uh, an entire box of Thin Mints for dessert, Leah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <For> no <sure>. judgment. <laughs> I've done it, too. The Girl Scouts may have just what you need for breakfast now as well. The Scouts will be selling a new cookie flavor this year called Toast Yay. It's a French toast-inspired cookie dipped in icing and ready for your breakfast table. Now, if you are worried the coronavirus pandemic is going to make it hard for you to get your hands on this new tree, do not worry. Girl Scouts will be continuing to sell cookies online, but you'll have to wait. They don't come available until cookie season officially starts in January. We're a long ways from that. Ooh, those look good, though. I'll try them. Yeah, what's your I'll favorite? You like the... Thin mints, or what are the coconut ones? The coconut caramel-looking puppies? Samosa. Samoa. Samoa. <laughs> Samosa. Samosa. <laughs> 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 I just eat them. I love a samosa. <laughs> what do you want from me? I don't know. What does that say about the Girl Scout cookie marketing when everybody's like, you know, the ones with the, the things You eat the them thing. too fast to read the box. I love the peanut butter cookies. <laughs> me too. I'm with you too, Josh. They tie with Thin Mints, though, in my book. Here's a live look this morning. We have sun in the forecast all day today. All right. Thanks, Hattie. Stick around, folks. We'll be right back. Three Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. It's the end of summer and Mother Nature is still bringing the heat. We're in a summer daze. Why not sleep better at night, find cool comfort in your family room, or extend the season on your porch with a quality ceiling fan from Madison Lighting. They're all on sale right now. Reduce your energy costs in summer and winter with a ceiling fan like this. Hurry and save during Madison Lighting's last ceiling fan sale of summer. Sale ends August 29th. Oh my gosh, wow, who am I? <laughs> Wow, is that really me? <laughs> they are some of the hottest videos on social media. Those videos claiming to instantly get rid of bags under your eyes. So celebrate this Labor Day knowing you look your best with Plexiderm. Lifestyle expert Annette Figueroa is here to tell us why she says this one is for real. This one is for real, and I'm so excited. We even have a video that the viewers can watch while you and I talk. And you'll notice the model has bags underneath his eyes and some sagging, and all he uses is a small amount, and that's how easy it is. All right, what's the active ingredient? Okay, so it's silicates that are minerals found in shale rock. And what it does is it tightens and lifts the appearance of bags underneath your eyes in as little as 10 minutes, no prescriptions, and very little effort. And I did this to my father. We were at home and we were screaming four minutes, 34 seconds, completely gone. My real true opinion is holy words I can't say on camera. <laughs> These lines bother me. They really do. And this is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I could feel it just lifting my skin. It feels great. Looks even better. I'm Neela. I'm 61 years old. I'm a professional personal trainer. It's so important to be in good health and to be fit and take care of yourself. How it makes you feel inside is amazing. Plexiderm, seriously, it fixes all that. It makes you feel as good outside as you do inside. Honest to God, it's amazing. There's nothing there. Like, the bags are gone. And not only does it work on the bags, it works on the appearance of crow's feet, fine lines, and wrinkles. So it targets all those problem areas. So this would be a daily thing or just when you want to, like, get rid of the bags. And yeah, it absolutely could be a daily thing. You have high school reunions, you have events you want to go to, you want to look years younger, this is it. And this Labor Day is the best time to try Plexiderm for $14.95. See it work for yourself after your first application. Just visit PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen.
Joe Biden will officially go against Donald Trump this November. We have the three things you need to know heading into day three of the DNC. And your first warm forecast includes sunshine and warmer temperatures today. I'll have all the details in just a few minutes. This is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, folks, and thanks for joining us. Joe Biden is the official Democratic presidential nominee more than 30 years after he first campaigned for it. State party leaders pledged their delegates in a first-time nationwide roll call. Biden will officially accept the nomination tomorrow. Amy Reid gives us the highlights from night two. Last night, we wrapped up night two of the Democratic National Convention, and here are three things you need to know about what happened. One, the nationwide roll call is being called a success online. This was the first time we've been able to tour the country during this part of the convention, and notably, Rhode Island's representatives held a plate of calamari when they showed support for Biden. Second, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez seconded Bernie Sanders' nomination, but it was symbolic. She said she's still voting for Biden. In her 60-second speech, she showed her support for the more progressive policies in the Democratic Party platform, carrying that arm of the party. Finally, Democrats hit hard on leadership, primarily what they see as failed leadership from President Trump, particularly when it comes to his handling of the coronavirus pandemic. Amy Reid reporting there. Some other moments a lot of people are talking about this morning. Joe Biden's wife, Dr. Jill capped off the night to talk about her husband. She spoke from the high school she once taught at and addressed the struggles parents and students are facing with the pandemic and online learning. More Republicans also starting to back Biden. The most recent is former Secretary of State Colin Powell. General Powell worked under George W. Bush's administration. Here's what he had to say about the nominee. I support Joe Biden because beginning on day one, he will restore Americans' leadership and our moral authority. He'll be a president who knows that America is strongest when, as he has said, we lead both by the power of our example and the example of our power. Powell also endorsed then-candidate Barack Obama in 2008 and 2012. Joining Powell is Cindy McCain, the widow of Senator John McCain. She spoke in a video and talked about the decades-long friendship her husband and Biden shared. We're keeping an eye on the president's Twitter account this morning as well to see if he reacts to any of those speeches or endorsements. There's another full lineup of people expected to speak today at the virtual convention. Here's the lineup that puts a spotlight on Democratic women like House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, and Senator Elizabeth Warren. Kamala Harris will officially accept her vice presidential nomination tonight. Former President Barack Obama will also speak. He's expected to outline his experiences working with Joe Biden as his vice president. The Trump campaign will visit Wisconsin for a third time this week when Mike Pence lands in Janesville this morning. The vice president will fly to that city at 8 a.m. before then heading to Darien. Once he gets there, he'll speak about trade policies and the economy. President Trump's son was in Milwaukee yesterday to show his support for law enforcement, and the president gave a rally speech in Oshkosh on Monday. Our Adam Duxter headed to Janesville right now. He'll be providing live updates all morning. You can watch his reports and the vice president's arrival live on channel3000.com and our Facebook page. The Wisconsin Elections Commission is now recommending that rapper Kanye West be kept off of the state's ballot in November. The staff determined West and his running mate missed the deadline to submit their nomination papers. West is trying to get on the ballot as a third party candidate representing the birthday party. The commission could make it official at their meeting tomorrow. We are following new information this morning with the DNC almost entirely virtual this year. Milwaukee and the state of Wisconsin won't see the economic benefit many had hoped for. But the Cap Times reports visitors are still expected to bring in around $3 million during the convention. That's significantly less than the $200 million local leaders originally anticipated. But during a time when the hospitality industry in Milwaukee is struggling, local leaders say they're still looking to capitalize however they can. 634 right now. Hattie McLean is here with the Look Traverse Horn weather forecast. Another beautiful sunrise shot today. Certainly is. Can't get tired of this view. We have clear skies across southern Wisconsin. Take a live look at our current conditions. 
winds as we look at the capital. Madison's 53 degrees. Winds are calm. Dew point is at 53 as well. Oftentimes humidity levels are right around 100% in the morning, but as temperatures climb through the day, we're going to see that number fall. So humidity is not going to be a huge issue today. Take a look at our temperature change from this time yesterday to today. It is much colder, especially in southeastern Wisconsin. About seven degrees colder in Watertown. Over 10 degrees colder this morning in Janesville than yesterday. Madison's about five degrees colder. You will feel the difference though as you step out the door. Let's take a look at our view across the entire midsection of the country. What is happening around here? Well, not a whole lot. This large area of high pressure is the dominating weather factor for us. That's going to keep things very quiet and really steer all rain chances around the area. So no rain for us today with this area of high pressure sitting directly overhead. Temperatures are warmest in the Plain States. We're seeing upper 60s right now from North Platte all the way to Bismarck. Little cooler under clear skies here, 60s and 50s for the Great Lakes. Dew points though, when you look at those numbers, we're not seeing any terribly high dew points in the area, so no expectations that uh, humidity is going to increase over the next couple of days. A closer look at southern Wisconsin using your future track forecast model today. You can time out that warm up by 8 o'clock. Temperatures will be back into the 60s and then by lunchtime today, mid 70s. Just a beautiful afternoon setting up with sunshine and pretty comfortable conditions. It'll be warm today with most spots topping right around 80 degrees. Staying pretty quiet though through the evening hours with clear skies once again expected. Our extended forecast has temperatures back into the 80s again on Thursday and Friday. There is just a slight chance for rain on Saturday for a shower or a thunderstorm. Overall though, the next 10 days look pretty dry for southern Wisconsin. Yeah, quite a stretch there, Hads. It certainly is. All right, thank you very much. 636 now, as more people share concerns about the U.S. Postal Service, Senator Ron Johnson will hold a virtual hearing tomorrow to learn more about the current financial troubles it faces. Johnson is the chairman of the Senate Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee. In a statement, Johnson says the Postal Service has had significant financial problems for years, and everyone wants everyone wants everyone rather to understand the fiscal challenges. Postmaster General Louis DeJoy will testify there. Now that hearing comes just a day before the Trump appointee testifies in front of the Democratic-led House. That's happening on Saturday. Democrats are increasingly worried about whether DeJoy's recent changes could impact mail-in voting this November. However, the Postmaster General changed course yesterday. He says all the changes being made to the Postal Service will be suspended until after the election. That means mail processing equipment and collection boxes will stay in place. Mail processing facilities will also stay open. 637 right now, more than a third of Americans plan to vote by mail for the presidential election. Most of those voters are Democrats. A new survey from UCLA Nationscape finds 48% of voters who plan to vote for Joe Biden are likely to vote by mail. That's more than twice the voters backing President Trump who plan to do the same. President Trump has been vocal against universal mail-in voting and has inaccurately said it creates voter fraud. A panel commissioned by the president found no evidence of voter fraud during the 2016 election. Changes to the post office have been causing mail slowdowns and they're not just impacting ballots. Prescriptions are also taking longer to get to delivered. Uh, the Department of Veterans Affairs is being forced now to find other ways to ship mail order prescriptions for patients who get their mail delivered by UPS, USPS. The service is responsible for sending 90% of the veterans mail order prescriptions. The VA says 25% of uh, have seen delays. They're now looking at other services like FedEx and UPS. Another new study finds black newborn babies are three times more likely to die when they're looked after by white doctors compared to black doctors. Meanwhile, the mortality rate for white babies largely unaffected by the doctor's race. Researchers at George Mason University looked at data for nearly two million births in Florida. Researchers say the findings should encourage hospitals to work to reduce biases. Trending now, teachers are some of the heroes that come out of the pandemic, and as they get ready to head back to the classroom, they're coming up with some creative ways to make the space feel more normal. Take a look at this classroom. A teacher at a private school in Florida decided to turn her kids' desks into cars. She said she didn't want to make the plexiglass dividers and social distancing seem, seem scary for her first graders, so she came up with this creative solution. The video is now going viral with almost 3 million views on Twitter this morning. They need little horns. Like beep, 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 Oh, beep. that would not be distracting <laughs> at all. I think how cool is that, though? You know, like, I think 
in that time as a kid, you know, you don't really understand what's going on. And in this right. way, it just seems fun. It just seems normal for them. A little creative, creativity coming out of the pandemic for sure. Yeah, way to put a positive spin on things. I love that. It's cute stuff. Yeah. yeah, and shout out to all of our teachers who are dealing with right. this as well. 639, let's take a look at your traffic on a Wednesday morning. We start with a construction alert. This is just south of the Beltline along Verona Road. That roundabout that's just underneath that Verona Road with those frontage roads that cross between Home Depot and the other storefronts on the southeast side of there. That's going to be closed from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. today as they do some bridge inspections in that area. So keep that in mind. You'll have to run around using Verona Road. The rest of Dane County looking like this. No major delays to speak of. Rock County also looking so far so good. A few slowdowns maybe on Highway 14 as you approach Janesville from the west. Drive time's though looking good. Let's take a live look outside. Just about 640 right now. Beautiful shot from the Edgewater Sky Cam of downtown Madison. Another beautiful sunrise on a Wednesday. Hattie's going to have your forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. And trying to keep your kids safe, we're going to take you inside a local school and show you what lunchtime could look like this fall. Construction is celebrating their 25-year anniversary, which means big savings on home repairs and improvements. No job is too small or too big, and your safety is always our concern. Respected in the industry and voted best of Madison, Fry Construction delivers lasting quality for your home. And now, for a limited time, save 25% off gutters or insulation with a full roof, siding, or window project, all with zero down. Zero percent interest for 12 months. Contact Fry Construction today. Love getting prices that are lower than low on food that's fresher than fresh? With the Pick and Save app, you can get personalized coupons on top of weekly sales and rewards like fuel points, all for prices that are lower than the everyday low. So go ahead, get lower than low. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. Our seniors that are being hit the hardest, they're frightened. And I want them to know that their health and safety will be my responsibility if I'm your president. And I'll have from day one, ready to go, the best medical experts and scientists to advise on our response. And I will not abandon you. It's a simple proposition, folks. We're all in this together. we got to fight this together. We'll emerge from this stronger because we did it together. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. When managing diabetes, you can't always stop for a finger stick. With the Freestyle Libre 14-day system, a continuous glucose monitor, you don't have to. With a painless one-second scan, you can check your glucose with a smartphone or reader so you can stay in the moment, no matter where you are or what you're doing. Ask your doctor for a prescription for the Freestyle Libre 14-day system. You can do it without finger sticks. Learn more at freestylelibre.us. Garver. Garver. Gather. Hey. Gathering. Garver. Gathering. Garve. Her. Ping. Garvering. A socially responsible gathering where a maximum of 250 people enjoy thirst quenching drinks, delicious food, and the arts in a safe, clean, and touchless outdoor environment. Let's, Let's go, go Garvering. Garver. Visit thegarverfeedmail.com for dates and details starting June 11th. Brought to you by News 3 Now, Madison Magazine, and the Garver Feed Mill. They're the best kept secrets of Madison's Concerts on the Square. Hi, I'm Andrew Sewell, Music Director of the Wisconsin Chamber Orchestra. Join us as we get closer to the musicians who make Concerts on the Square something special. Wednesdays on Live at 4. Connect with News 3 Now on Facebook Messenger to create a personalized news feed just for you. The topics you want, the day's top stories, and push alerts for breaking news all through Messenger. Learn more at channel3000.com. Welcome back at 643 as we continue our back to school coverage on News 3 Now this morning. We're starting to hear a common theme from the experts. The science on COVID-19 and your children is still changing. Like many parents, scientists say it's important to get students back in schools, but it has to be done safely. One of the reasons it's so important is because of nutrition. The CDC says schools are essential to helping your kids meet their nutritional needs. The center's research shows many kids eat up to half of their calories while at school. For the 30 million kids who participate in the National School Lunch Program, that mealtime is essential. Yeah, a lot of kids are doing breakfast and lunch at school. 
And figuring out how to do all that safely is a major adjustment that districts across the country are making right now. A lot of them are ditching those crowded cafeterias and lunch lines and much more. We recently got a look at what it will look like for kids returning to school. Good morning. When kids arrive to school this year, things will certainly be different. Some of the biggest changes will be at breakfast and lunch times. Verona is one of the few districts in the metro where some students will be returning to schools with new precautions in place. To test that out, Verona schools got to do a bit of a trial run here during their summer school program. At Verona's Country View Elementary, summer school students are eating in their classrooms instead of the cafeteria. Their desks are spread out. Each student has their own water bottle. The meals come in sealed bags. And when the kids are finished eating, here comes the teacher with the hand sanitizer. Verona made their plan considering guidelines from the state and the CDC. There was a substantial amount of planning and communication that had to go into place to making sure that this would be a possibility. Next month, kindergarten through second graders will attend in-person half days. I recently talked with this woman who has two children who could return. I think whatever measures you put, it's not going to work. She doesn't want her face shown on camera, fearing any backlash. But she says that she chose to have her kids learn from home. I have nothing but praises. It's just I don't think they're doing the right thing. Yeah, families have certainly had to make a lot of tough decisions recently. Now, it is important to note that school districts may do things a little bit differently. If you have any specific questions, you can contact your child's school. It's really important to note that there are very few schools that are going back in person right now. But once those bigger districts do start to open up, we're real likely to see scenarios like this. I mean, they're not going to just open everything back up full, like, say, when Madison or all the other big districts open back up. I mean, they're going to have to wean, you know, get into it slowly. So eating in classrooms, prepackaged meals, uh, the hand sanitizer and wipes. I was surprised to see just how much hand sanitizer and how many wipes they went through in such a short amount of time. And that's likely what we're going to see in, in the, you know, the future going forward here. I was going to say, it's interesting to see what schools are doing when they go back, but Madison schools aren't going back. So what mm -hmm. are these kids doing for lunch? Yeah, and that's a big hurdle that they have got to get across. You know, getting meals to kids, that is nearly impossible right now. So families have to go to these meal sites. That's one of the topics that we're going to get into over the next couple of days. And we're also going to share ways that you can help. We're going to get into that tomorrow. There are some nonprofits who are trying to fill the gaps here of getting kids meals. How you can help, that's tomorrow. And then on Friday, we'll look at the challenges uh, that are out there when it comes to feeding kids that are virtually learning. All right, 647. Let's turn to the forecast with Hattie this morning. Another beautiful start. Rinse and repeat forecast is what we're calling it this week. It certainly is. You're going to love the forecast if you wanted sunshine today. Skies are clear right now. Here's the view from the Edgewater Sky Cam looking out over Lake Mendota as well as the Union Terrace in downtown Madison. Nice, quiet start to the day today. Temperatures statewide are generally in the 50s. There are always a few exceptions. Milwaukee along the lake shore is a little warmer with 61 right now. Steve Point has been in the 40s for the last couple of hours. Temps are going to climb pretty quickly today, but dew points are not going to climb. Dew points will hover in the mid 50s, which is well within that comfortable range. Here's a look at your day planner temperatures. Again, we're going to keep mostly sunny skies through the day today with temperatures already back in the mid 70s by lunchtime, topping right around 80 later on this afternoon. All right, Hattie, thank you. Stay with us coming up in the morning spring. We're tracking a breaking update to a shots fired into investigation in Middleton. We'll have those new details coming up here in just a few minutes. Stick around. You're watching News 3 Now this morning. Coos 3 is sponsored by Three Bears Resort, indoor water park and conference center in Warrens, Wisconsin. This is the big one, folks. The Brothers Main Everything's on Sale sale. Right now, you'll get everything from Whirlpool, Maytag, KitchenAid, and Amana with blowout savings, like a Maytag washer for $3.99 and a Maytag dryer for just $3.99. And you'll always get more from the Moore store, like our risk-free 30-day price satisfaction guarantee. The Everything's on Sale sale, with more selection, more savings, and more satisfaction on everything. Now at the Brothers Main, your local store for more since 1938. 
Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of my pillow. Just like you, I had problems sleeping. I tried every pillow out there and nothing worked. 15 years ago, I invented my pillow. It took me two years to develop because I wanted to have everything you would ever want in a pillow. I made sure that you could adjust my patented fill so you could have the exact support you need as an individual, regardless of your sleep position. I also wanted a pillow that would last, so I made my pillow machine washable and dryable. I backed my pillow with a 10 year warranty and a 60 day money back guarantee. Not only that, I do all my own manufacturing in my home state of Minnesota. I really like the fact that it was made in the USA. I think that USA products are a better quality product. I've tried a lot of other pillows and nothing's worked like my pillow. I'm interrupting this commercial right now to give you deep discounts, not just on my pillows, but also my mattress topper sheets and so much more. For example, you can get body pillows regular $89.99, now only $29.99, or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. I used to think that sheets were just sheets. I got the Giza Dream sheets. They are the most comfortable sheets I've ever had. The Go Anywhere pillow is so easy to just roll up and take anywhere I want to go. Go Anywhere pillow is really comfortable, so that's what I really like. It's nice and supportive, and it's nice and small. The My Pillow Topper, for the first time, has enabled me to have a cool night's sleep. I'm able to go to bed and just get rest. That's three inches of wonderful that's in the My Pillow mattress topper. It's just like a firm cloud. My Pillow helps me get a good night's sleep so I can do my job in the morning. Go to MyPillow.com to get deep discounts, not just on my pillows, but so much more. For example, you get body pillows, regular $89.99, now only $29.99, or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. In 1995, Denver Mattress opened its doors to the world. A lot has changed in 25 years, but one thing that stayed the same? Denver Mattress is still the easiest way to get the right mattress. And during the 25th anniversary sale, take 25% off the entire Doctor's Choice lineup. Check out the Summit Firm for only $189.99. And score free shipping when you buy any mattress. And to celebrate our newest arrival, test out the outrageously comfortable Casper mattress. And five years no interest. Happy birthday, Denver Mattress! Download the Channel 3000 app today. Welcome back. It's 6.51. Time for the morning sprint. We start with an update to breaking news out of Middleton this morning. Within the last 30 minutes, we've learned Middleton police are investigating two separate shots fired incidents. The first came in at 150 on Century Avenue. Police say no evidence was found and no one was hurt. And then about two hours later, police responded to another shots fired call on Century Avenue at Highland Way. That's near the Pheasant Branch Conservancy. Police found several shell casings there and police say no one was hurt and no one's been arrested yet. Those two shootings haven't been connected. We'll continue to follow new developments throughout CBS this morning. We are entering day three of the Democratic National Convention. You are taking a live look at Wilmington, North Carolina right now. That is where Kamala Harris will accept her vice presidential nomination later today. Joe Biden is now officially the Democratic nominee and he'll accept that nomination tomorrow. Kamala Harris is one of the many Democratic women expected to speak at the convention today. That includes House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Hillary Clinton, and Senator Elizabeth Warren. Barack Obama will also speak. He's expected to outline his experiences working with Biden as his vice president. Oh, we're seeing twice the amount of COVID-19 hospitalizations in Wisconsin compared to Monday. 53 people went to the hospital. 2,700 hospital beds are available. The latest data from the DHS shows 6.3% of results came back positive yesterday. That's down by more than a percentage point from Monday. 12% of the state's 67,000 confirmed cases are still active. Student athletes in Ohio will be able to play this fall with some restrictions. Governor Mike DeWine's order will allow fall sports without a specific mask requirement. He's leaving that up to school districts and coaches. Spectators, however, will need to wear masks and stay socially distanced. COVID testing will not be required for games for athletes in contact sports. If an athlete tests positive, they're asked to follow the CDC quarantine guidelines. The first first major coronavirus vaccine trial is moving along, but researchers say they need more people of color to enroll in the trial for it to succeed. Black people and Latinos make up more than 50% of the country's COVID-19 cases, but only make up about 15% of 
of participants in Moderna's clinical trial. The company is about 12,000 volunteers away from its goal. Researchers say the vaccine could be delayed if not enough people volunteer. The Brewers' three-game winning streak is over after a late night in Minnesota. Milwaukee's bats were cold most of the night as Minnesota's Kenta Maeda took a no-hitter into the ninth. The crew broke up the no-hitter and tied the game, but ended up losing in 12 innings. They'll play the Twins again tonight at 7. Breaking right now, you're taking a live look at a massive industrial fire in Grand Prairie, Texas. The Dallas Morning Star reports it started around 1 o'clock this morning. You can see it's still burning at this hour. That fire and smoke can be seen from miles away, and local news crews say explosions can be heard coming from the facility. Still no word on what started the fire or whether anyone has been hurt. Senate Republicans are out of session until September, but they've drafted a scaled-back coronavirus relief proposal. That proposal isn't expected to be considered anytime soon, but it could be a new marker for a conference in the future. It includes $10 billion in funding for the U.S. Postal Service, which has become a sticking point for Democratic leaders. A massive onion recall is getting bigger. Cases of salmonella now in 47 states with cases and hospitalizations still growing. The FDA says the samples from Bakersfield, California include all red, white, yellow, and sweet yellow onions. They were shipped to all 50 states in Washington, D.C. from May 1st to August 1st. The onions were sent to restaurants, wholesalers, and Kroger grocery stores and could be branded as Kroger products. The teenagers accused of shooting and killing 11-year-old Anissa Scott are in jail this morning, each being held on multi-million dollar bails. 19-year-old Parian Carrion and 16-year-old Andre Brown are both charged with first-degree intentional homicide. Both are from Madison. Carrion's bail is set at more than $2 million, not only for Anissa's homicide, but for other charges as well. Brown is believed to be the shooter. His bail is set at $1.5 million. He'll be tried in adult court because of the severity of the crime. 655, let's take a look at First warn traffic on a Wednesday morning. If you're heading out right now, we're seeing some slowdowns along East Washington Avenue, both inbound and outbound of downtown. Uh, Beltline looking so far so good. If you're heading in from the interstate, four minutes from the interstate to John Nolan Drive. John Nolan Drive also moving at posted speeds. That's your first warn traffic. And your first warm weather forecast starts with a little bit of fog through the Wisconsin River Valley. Visibility down to zero in Boscobel, just half mile in Lone Rock. The fog is confined to low-lying spots this morning. Temperatures are in the 50s, but we'll see a quick warm-up today. Over the next 12 hours, we'll climb to highs right around 80 degrees this afternoon. Mostly sunny skies expected to continue through the day and relatively low humidity. Here's a look at that extended forecast. We have temperatures staying in the 80s through the rest of the week with quiet weather. There is a slight chance for a shower or thunderstorm on Saturday. Temperatures still topping in the mid-80s this weekend. Thanks, Hattie. Thanks for watching, folks. Enjoy the day. We'll see you back here tomorrow.